Hello everyone, it's History Behind the Warrior, and welcome to another video. Now today I wanted to do a blast from the past, and talk about an old school gem of the series, the Mortal Kombat reboot of the series, Mortal Kombat 9. Now, unlike my typical content where I stroll through the history and background of characters, today I wanted to do a deep dive of the contents of Mortal Kombat 9, and talk about things that you may have in fact not known about the game. As you see, whilst I was doing my history, history of Goro video, I stumbled across an interesting source of information going in depth on the contents of 9 and the unused assets that do in fact exist within the game. This in fact includes unused characters and old existing ideas that would later be implemented into the reboot trilogy. Now before we jump right into the fray, let's talk a little bit about Mortal Kombat 9 itself and what exactly was it all about? What makes it so important in the series? Now for those of you who are a little more new to the Mortal Kombat franchise, Mortal Kombat 9 was a very important installment in the franchise, as it was the first Mortal Kombat game properly published under the Warner Bros banner, as the team were previously with Midway, who unfortunately filed for bankruptcy in the late 2000s. From here, the series would be bought by Warner, and the team would now be given the name Neverrealm Studios upon the launch of Mortal Kombat 9. This helped push them to the forefront of the fighting game scene as a whole. Now, under a new banner, 9 was launched as a somewhat reboot of the series, having reset the continuity and gone back to its 2D roots. It's also around this time where film franchises in the cinema were also giving their series a reboot, so 9 just so happened to have fallen into that trend and was launched to crazy success, as it appealed to a new generation of gamers and players as a whole. Now, with 9 being a successful reboot of the franchise, it has only gone from strength to strength, having two more installments, and since then, springing off a comic book series and a reboot film-wise, that has of course only just come out. Now, with the revitalization of the series, it turns out that 9 in fact has a ton of unused assets, including character bios and arcade ladder endings that were never ever seen. Now, what characters were these? Well, at some point in time, it does seem that all of the boss characters in the game were indeed at one point actually playable. The reason as to why it didn't make the final cut of the game is currently unknown, as the players them you do actually have to mod the game. But by doing so, and exploring the Necropolis, the counterpart of the crypt, we were not only able to see the character bios of the bosses, but in fact their arcade ladder endings. So with that being said, let's talk about these bios and endings, starting with Goro. Prince Goro has brought much honour to the Shokun race by serving Shao Kahn. His bloody achievements include crushed rebellions and conquered provinces. During the past 500 years, he has been celebrated for winning the last 9 Mortal Kombat tournaments for Outworld. Should he defeat Earthrealm's champion this time, he will become more than legendary. There are none in Earthrealm who can withstand the might of Goro. Now, his ending says the following. For millennia, Shao Kahn has toyed with the proud Shokun race, continuously demanding that they prove their worth against the hated centaurs. Goro slew the Emperor, ending this indignity. He then used Shao Kahn's blood to paint runic symbols on his body, an ancient Shokun ritual of succession. Suddenly, the runes began to glow, searing Goro's flesh. Incredible power surged through his body, and Goro became Draffen. The destroyed prince prophesied to exterminate the centaurs and reunite the Shokun bloodlines. So yeah, this is a pretty damn cool ending for Goro, and is the one and only time Draffen is ever mentioned. Now, with this Shokun done, let's move on to the Tigra champion, Kintaro. Like Goro and Shiva, Kintaro is of the four-armed Shokun race. Unlike his aristocratic comrades, he is of the lower Tigra lineage. However, as is customary when recruiting Shokun and Centaurs into Shao Kahn's service, one of each race must face each other in bloody combat. Kintaro killed his opponent, and in an unprecedented act of bravado, roared for more centaur blood. Centaurs leapt furiously into the ring to their demise. This savagery led Shao Kahn to appoint Kintaro his personal bodyguard. Now, Kintaro's ending says the following. Kintaro's meteoric rise to glory in the service of Shao Kahn had inflated his ego and his hunger for exhalation, but his position as the Emperor's bodyguard had stifled any opportunities 
for further achievement or recognition. Save one. After killing Shao Kahn, the most powerful being in Outworld, Kintaro's fame had grown indeed. He achieved the notoriety of a traitor. Now hunted by the centaurs, Tarkatans, and Shokan, Kintaro lives in a life of exile, a victim of his own infamy. So now, let's move on to the Outworld Emperor, Shao Kahn. Emperor Shao Kahn's lust for power is only matched by his ruthlessness. Millennia ago, he he overthrew Onaga as the ruler of Outworld and has conquered many other realms since. However, he turned his attention to Earthrealm. The Mortal Kombat tournament prevents him from taking the realm by force, but if Shao Kahn's champion wins 10 consecutive tournaments, Earthrealm will be his. As long as his champion Shang Tsung and Prince Goro do not fail him, he will be victorious. Now here's a rather interesting ending for the Emperor. Now trapped in the past, he awaited for the perfect moment, the invasion of Earthrealm to strike. He killed the only one person powerful enough to oppose a threat, his past self. With the combined power of Blaze and all of the souls consumed by his past self, Khan became the supreme being of the universe. All worlds and all realities belong to Khan, thanks to you. Have a nice day. Now, if you can't quite tell, this is a little bit of tongue-in-cheek humor with breaking down the fourth wall, possibly indicating that these bios and endings were made during the later half of the game's development and were possibly left here as Easter eggs for players to unearth. Now, with these bios and endings out the way, let's talk about the strange characters that do in fact live on the disc. Now, on release, this game had a fair few interesting assets that may have gone over many people's heads, including a very basic and watered-down version of Scarlet. What I mean by this is that on release, the base of Scarlet, including her model, is in fact on the disc, but she actually has no official moveset. Instead, it's a mishmash of other characters' moves that do in fact make her up. Think Tanya from MKX's story mode, but much, much more watered down, as the model exists, but the moves surrounding the character belong to everyone else. So this version of Scarlet could be seen as base Scarlet, as upon her official DLC release is when she received her official moveset. So technically, she always exists in the base version of the game, but isn't playable up until her DLC release. And on top of this, fun fact, her alternate skin is on the disc too, but cannot be used. It's actually something that you would later be able to access in a different port of the game, that being the PS Vita version of Mortal Kombat 9. Now, another character that is interestingly kind of in the game is the infamous Fujin, but not quite as you would imagine. You see, there was in fact an NPC model slash character by the name of DLC Base Male. It was a model used to test the opening slot of the DLC bar on the character select screen. Now, when you did select this DLC Base Male, the announcer would actually say Fujin. Fujin. But of course, the character didn't truly exist. So, this may possibly hint that maybe at some point in time, Fujin was supposed to be part of the first wave of DLC, but may have been sidelined for a guest character. If I were to guesstimate, I'd say it was a nightmare of sorts. But that's just a tinfoil hat theory on my end. With this done and out the way, let's talk about the other assets that do exist in game. One that understandably may have gone over many people's heads is that Jax originally was supposed to have a machine gun much like his previous timeline counterpart, and this machine gun was supposed to have the same sound effects from his MK vs DC counterpart. Now, for whatever reason, this wouldn't actually make it into the game at all, later being used in Mortal Kombat X's variation system, where it's part of the heavy weapons loadout. So here, actually take a listen. Now, as we actually go deeper into the audio files of the game, it reveals some pretty cool and interesting stuff, including the likes of a brutality line. Brutality. 
So yes, originally, brutalities were supposed to make an appearance in Mortal Kombat 9, but much like the other things I have mentioned here, were cut from the base game upon release. This idea would of course later return in full force in the following installment, Mortal Kombat X. So from what you can tell here, there's a bunch of ideas from 9 that would later be integrated into the base version of MKX. So X could possibly be seen as what the developers originally envisioned Mortal Kombat 9 to play like. Now, as we look deeper into the audio files, we actually find a bunch of sound files of special moves from characters that didn't quite make it into the game. This included the likes of Liu Kang's bicycle kick, Raiden's Superman fly, and finally Shang Tsung. Also, what's very interesting here is that apparently Sub-Zero had a different intro. You see, of course, in the lore, there are two different Sub-Zeros, the first being Bi Han and the second being Kwai Lang. Now, on the base roster of the game, the default Sub-Zero that you do pick is Kwai Liang, whereas the alternative costume is Bi Han. Originally, if you were to pick the Bi Han skin and costume, this is what his intro would have actually sounded like. Feel death's cold embrace. So yes, much like MKX, it seems like they originally intended for different skins to have different intros. Of course, this could have exclusively been a thing between Bi Han and Kwai Liang, but it's still something very interesting and something that does happen in X when you do select the Revenant skins. Now, quickly going back on Shao Kahn, it actually seems like this game originally intended for him to have more of a legacy-based moveset for Mortal Kombat 2-3 with a revamped fireball and reflecting shield. So it's pretty interesting in that instance, but he wasn't entirely fleshed out as a character, as he has a bunch of unused sound effects and an intro and outro line that I'm gonna play here, so please do check them out, I think this is really really cool and neat, as I never knew about this till I made this video. I am Shao Kahn, I rule this world, I win, all too easy. <laughs> And like that, this has been it for the secrets you never knew about Mortal Kombat 9. Making this video was super fun as I got to take a deep dive on one of my personal favourite games and basically look under the hood of what could have been. Now there's a lot of ideas here that I'm very happy but they followed through on as brutalities were a huge part of Mortal Kombat X and it was X that first introduced the different intros, something that would become a staple of Neverrealm games going forward. You know, I feel like with that being said, it also helps me kind of understand why I enjoy MKX so much. There's so much they built upon in 9 that was pretty much there from the release date, we just didn't know about it. So making a video like this has really allowed me to appreciate what we had and the little ideas that were sprinkled in from day 1. Now that being said, I do hope you enjoyed this guys as this is it. I may possibly do one of these again in the future, but as of right now, I don't have another game in mind, so who knows what the future holds. But anyway guys without any further ado that has been it for me if you have enjoyed this video please let's try getting this video to about 500 likes and don't forget to tick that bell as it is an incredible way of keeping up to date with all of my content and all future releases but for now as always guys please comment like subscribe and share this video with everyone you know please take care and i'll see you all next time